Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 109, and the name is Bluetooth. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This looks like a micro SD card module that we'll get used with one of the builds. This is the 8 pixel RGB LED module. This is the Bluetooth 5.1 audio receiver. This is the Super Mini NRF52840 development board. This is the PCM5102A I2S digital audio module. This is a piece of 22 gauge copper wire. This is the USB keyboard and mouse to BLE adapter. This is the ESP Room 32 development board. This is the USB Bluetooth 5.3 adapter dongle. This is the exclusive Burning Chrome PCB. Here we've got a neat Bluetooth hacker sticker. And last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 109 collectible reference card. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? And in addition to their PCB prototype service, they also offer PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. Check the link in the description for more details. And again, we thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. Okay, so the first thing the Instructable has us experiment with here is the little audio module. And I've got a set of powered Logitech PC speakers here that have the 1 8 size plug. Then that's going to go into this jack on this module. Then we're going to hook up some USB-C to give it some power. And you'll hear the little voice first announce that it's BT module ready or something like that. Bluetooth mode. And you'll see a blue LED blinking. And then... You'll see on my phone here, I see something I can connect to called HW-BT. And then I'll pair with that, and then you'll hear the voice make a different announcement that we're connected successfully. The Bluetooth device is connected us successfully. And then you should hear when I stream some sample music. So you can see how this could be a real handy module. You could use it with a cable like this, or you could use it with a cable like this one. If you've got like an old school radio with some RCA inputs, you can basically very easily make it Bluetooth enabled with one of these modules. You could kind of embed it into a car stereo if you want to keep it factory looking, or if it's an older one that doesn't have it. Or you can do like I did in this video here, and I'll put a link in the description, where I added Bluetooth to a micro Sony hi-fi system for my oldest kid, and it works great. You can look here at the board. You can actually just put the power right on the board and skip the USB-C, and you can put your audio wires in on these little spots here, and you don't have to use a cable into that jack. Okay, next, the Instructable has us get our Super Mini Dev Board. I'm going to grab that and plug that into USB. And the red LED is supposed to be solid and the blue LED will blink. And that looks like that's okay there. And then over on the PC side, you'll see we'll pop up with a drive that says Nice Nano. And similar to the Pico, there are different flavors of firmware you can put on here. And there's actually a version of CircuitPython that will run on this. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab the Bluetooth Sniffer UF2 firmware file from the link in the Instructable. So I'm going to download that. And then I'm just going to copy and paste it into that drive, which will automatically cause it to reboot. And one quick note here, if you ever want to get it back into bootloader mode where you can put a different firmware on it, all you have to do is short the reset and ground pins twice within half a second. And then you should see it pop back up uh, in that way where you can just drag a new UF2 file onto it. Just be careful with whatever method you decide to use to do that so you don't mess it up and ground out a pin you don't mean to. And the next steps are not really covered much in the Instructable itself. It does have a link to some documentation. 
basically we're going to go and install Wireshark, which is something I'm kind of familiar with, but it's a pretty straightforward installation procedure. And then I install Python. After that was finished installing, I used this command line to use pip to make sure that PySerial was installed. I had a little bit of headache trying to use the quote unquote supported method for installing this NRF um, extension thing for Wireshark. So ultimately I just got the zip file and unzipped it and dropped it into the external capture directory within Wireshark. And I restarted Wireshark and then it showed up as an option. And you can see when I fired up Wireshark after that and used that, uh, ton of BLE traffic started flying by. All right, next, the Instructable has us turn our focus to the ESP32 board. We're going to plug that in with the USB cable and it says just a solid red light will illuminate nothing else. Then it tells us to install the Arduino IDE. I've already got that installed. It's pretty easy if you don't. And within the IDE, I'm going to use the board manager and you search for ESP32. Uh, you'll see that I already had that installed, but it does look like it needs an update. So I'm going to go ahead and hit update right there. If you didn't have it, it would have the button would say install like the one above it there. Then we're going to go to tools board ESP32, ESP32 dev module. And then I'm going to select tools and make sure the COM port is correct. Then we're going to open up the uh, sketch that says Examples, basic, blink. Then we're going to add the line, define LED built into at the top of the sketch. We're going to push that to the board. And we should see that the blue LED is blinking. And that looks good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is get these little pieces of wire attached to our LED module. And we're going to use that piece of insulated wire that was included in the kit. And what we're going to do is strip a little bit at a time, or, you know, you really could, you could strip the whole piece if you wanted to, it's up to you. And we're going to basically populate each of these eight pads with a little piece of wire. And then we're going to bend them up at an angle. Like you see in the illustration part C here, that's the gist of it. And I'm going to show you here in the next little bit, what I did. And you'll see that I made some mistakes. And uh, I was going to say, if you do not have a pair of strippers that are easy to use for stuff like this, I highly recommend these little knockoff ones like this. There are nicer ones from better brands, but this one works pretty well for me from Amazon and it's relatively cheap. So here in the first part, pretty straightforward, just stripping a bit of wire. I went ahead and pre-populated these pads with some solder. And then I just kind of go around cutting, stripping, and putting all the other pieces on there. And that's pretty normal, straightforward. And you'll see here, here's one of my screw ups. Probably got a little too rough with it, trying to go too fast. So just again, take your time. You don't want to be pulling the pads up off the PCB like I did. We can fix this, it's going to be okay. The instructable makes sure to tell us that we need to have the in match the in on the main PCB and the out match the out on the main PCB. So you want to make sure it's oriented like that when you mate the two together. And same thing here, probably got a little hand fisted and you can see that looks like kind of hot garbage right there and one of them pretty much fell off. So I've, uh, I think I did a little better last time around when I did these kind of connections, but you know, as long as you get from A to B, it doesn't have to be the prettiest. You just want to make sure you don't damage the pads, like by putting the wrong kind of pressure and ripping them off the board. If you don't do that, you should be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I lose this one right there too. I'm going to have to redo. So then I get the soldering going to attach it to the main board and do some adjusting and tweaking where needed. And you'll see I'll add them where they're missing. And eventually everything is secure and okay. Next, it was time to configure the audio module. And the Instructable has some certain jumper settings we want to make on the back of this thing. And you can see, you know, you've got one, two, three, four, and you can either jump it to high or low on each one. So we just follow the instructions here and make them match. And you'll see here near the end, I think I've got a little bit 
jumping to the other side. So I had to clean it up a little bit and use a pick for a second just to make sure that that's clear between them. Next, the Instructable has us attach these modules to the main board. And starting out here with attaching some headers to the audio board, then I'll break off a little bit here so we can have the right number of pins for the other side of the audio board. Then I'll solder those in from the top. Then I'll go ahead and stick the ESP32 in from the top. And I'll flip it over and start soldering the audio module pins. And then I got to work on all the pins for the ESP32. Then I'll put the headers in the SD card module. And the instructable says you can have it fit flush to the board if you remove this bit of plastic after you secure the pins. And you can see where I do that. It's kind of finicky, but not impossible to get the plastic off, as you can see here. Then I get that stuck in the board and solder it into place. And then with the excess lead sticking out, I cut those off. Next, the instructable tells us to head over into the Arduino IDE and go to Manage Libraries and look for Fast LED by Daniel Garcia. You can see I've already got that installed, but it does have an update. So I'm going to go ahead and take that update. If we didn't have it, when you found it, you would see the install button. Same thing. You'd hit that and let that install. Next, we grab this touch test sketch and open that up. And we compile and push that back to the board, which we can't do until we plug it back in. Whoops. And after we get this compiled and pushed to the board, we're going to touch all the buttons and see what happens. And it looks like that's working OK. You can see how the lights are changing. So that means it's reading our button touches and the LEDs are working because we're seeing them light up. Next, we're instructed to get this ESP32 Audio I2S library. You can see I already have that installed. That will be the same way you'd find it and install it. And then we're going to open up this test ESP32 I2S sketch. And then you see in there, looks like it's going to maybe try to stream something from online. We'll have to see if it actually does that. But basically, you just need to go up here and you'll edit this with your SSID and password. And after you get through making your edits, you're going to need to go to tools, partition scheme, and make sure you've selected huge app there. Then you'll hit the compile and send it. And if you remember, I've got these uh, powered Logitech speakers from before. So we're going to plug these in. I think based on what that code looked like, we should hear some tunes that hopefully don't get me a copyright strike. If it seems like they might, uh, you may only hear a few seconds. Plug this in and turn these on. Okay, so for this next one, we're going to comment out the line there where it's going to try to pull the stream and we're going to uncomment this one. And this is going to play an MP3 off of the SD card. So we'll get to test the SD capability of the board we just stuck on there. And you can, whatever the file name is, I'm just going to do this and it's going to be in the root directory of the SD card. And I will tell you, I had a heck of a time getting this to work. And once I reformatted my SD card and put the file back on there, it was just fine. This is our world now, the world of the electron and the switch, the beauty of the bond. We exist without nationality, skin color, or religious bias. You wage wars, murder, cheat, lie to us and try to make us believe it's for our own good, yet we're the criminals. Yes, I am a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. I am a hacker, and this is my manifesto. Huh? Right? Manifesto? You may stop me, but you can't stop us all. Oh, that's cool. Cool? Yeah, cool. You think it's cool? It's cool. Next, the instructor is going to have a stream Bluetooth audio from the ESP32 to the red audio receiver module that we played with earlier. Now, for this library, we just click the link. It's going to take you to a GitHub page. And if you mess around and look at the documentation near the bottom, there's actually the get instructions to actually get them that way. And so I just went into my Arduino library directory and then ran the get commands and then I pulled those right down. 
And to be able to see this stuff in Arduino, I had to restart Arduino. After that, we're going to go to File, Example, ESP32A2DP, BT underscore music underscore sender underscore right sketch. And like before, we want to go to Tools, Partition Scheme, and make this huge app. And then under the A2DP source start, we want to change that from Lexon Mino L to HWBT because that's going to be our target. If you remember, that's what it showed up as earlier. That's how we're going to get the sound over to the red module. We're going to change this volume from 20 to 100. Then we're going to send it over to the ESP32 and it's going to play some sound samples. Let's see if it works. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. So that shows you sending from this to this, or you could send it to anything. Okay, next, as we follow along with the Instructable, we're going to make our ESP32 be a receiver of Bluetooth this time. So we're going to open up another example, the BT Music Receiver Arduino I2S3. And then we're going to open that up and we're going to edit these lines. We're going to make the I2S SCK26, the I2S WS25, and the I2S SD out 22. And down here, you can see where you can edit the name of the speaker. And uh, I can't leave that stock, so I'm going to change that to Hack Shack speaker. Then we're going to compile and send this over to the ESP32. All right, so I've got this plugged in. The uh, little red thing is no longer hooked up to anything. That's disconnected. So now see there, Hack Shack speaker. Let's connect to it. That's working. Next in the instructable, it mentions this USB dongle that was included. I play with this a little bit. I tried to use it on a couple of Windows machines I have here that don't have built-in Bluetooth. And it was kind of inconsistent. It would kind of get detected, then fall away and come back. So I may need to look at some things with this. But uh, I'm going to try to mess with it more a little bit later on. Next up, we've got this little BLE usb mouse keyboard adapter that can i guess sync up with up to eight different devices it's kind of weird what's the use case for this thing typically it almost reminds me like if you've got like one of these little mini mobile farms where you're using a bunch of mobile phones to like do some stuff at the same time i don't know kind of weird anyway um it does show up and um i didn't realize at first it was just really aimed at mobile devices i thought i was going to work on a pc but it does definitely not do that and I did get it synced up with my Android phone. But even then, like something with the key mappings is it does not, you know, I just can't type on it with one of my USB keyboards. It just does all kinds of crazy stuff. But even though I had, you know, it's kind of weird. I was able to, you know, look at the address that this thing has and find that when I was sniffing with the sniffer that we did way back at the beginning of the video. So that's pretty cool. And in theory, you know, you could intercept and sniff uh, BLE keyboard traffic if you needed to. So that's pretty cool. This has been pretty fun hacker box. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a HackerBox 109 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on January 31st, 2025. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a U.S. shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still HackerBox 109s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway and want to get one, check them out. Or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.